Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the benefits of GLP-1 agonists in regards to dementia. As most of you know, I'm a huge proponent of GLP-1 agonists, whether it's for weight loss or for overall metabolic health. I truly believe that these compounds are the future of medicine. I know the GLP-1 agonists have quickly risen in popularity because of their profound effects on appetite suppression and thus weight loss, but the benefits of GLP-1 agonists stretch far beyond just our physical bodies, and more and more studies have actually shown that they provide neuroprotective benefits as well. In this video, we will cover how GLP-1 therapy can help protect against conditions such as dementia and Alzheimer's. So let's get started. So in my opinion, before you can understand how to prevent or treat a disease, you need to understand what causes it. Dementia is an umbrella term that defines different diseases that affect memory, reasoning, behavior, and the ability to perform everyday activities. The most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's dementia, accounting for about 60 to 80% of cases, while the second leading cause is vascular dementia. Alzheimer's disease is caused by abnormal deposits of plaques in the brain, which induce oxidative stress and eventual death of neurons in the brain. Alzheimer's dementia has a very strong genetic component, and the most well-known gene associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's is the APOE gene, specifically the APOE4 variant. So if you do have a first-degree relative with Alzheimer's dementia, it's not a bad idea to get some sort of genetic testing done to see if you are predisposed to a condition like this. The second most leading cause of dementia is vascular dementia. This is often caused by either large acute events, such as a stroke, or more commonly, poorly controlled chronic conditions leading to inflammation and oxidative stress of the blood vessels of the neurons in the brain. Usually, this is related to poorly controlled blood pressure or poorly controlled blood sugar, such as in conditions like diabetes. Regardless of the type of dementia, the key contributing factor is neuroinflammation, leading to oxidative stress and eventually neuronal cell death. And the problem is that unlike skin cells that can regenerate, the cells of the brain cannot regenerate, and once they are destroyed, they are gone for good. So now that we've talked about how dementia occurs, let's talk about the key roles that GLP-1 agonists play to prevent dementia. GLP-1 receptor agonists improve insulin resistance and blood pressure, which leads to decreased neuroinflammation and oxidative stress. They promote neurotrophic effects, and they also decrease the buildup and deposition of those abnormal plaques that are seen in Alzheimer's dementia. There was actually a clinical trial done regarding liraglutide and its effects on Alzheimer's dementia. For those of you that don't know, liraglutide was one of the original GLP-1 agonists. It came before semaglutide and trizepatide, and it was a once daily injection that basically first introduced GLP-1 agonists to the masses. So the trial that I'm talking about was done on a certain subset of mice, and these mice had a specific mutation that caused premature aging along with increased abnormal plaque deposits in the brain, which led to decreased cognition. There was two different groups. One group of mice received liraglutide, the other group of mice received nothing or a placebo and this went on for four months. And what the studies found was that the mice that received nothing or a placebo actually showed significant learning and memory retention deficits compared to the mice that received liraglutide. It also showed that the mice that received liraglutide had no signs of abnormal plaque deposition or buildup, which was usually seen in Alzheimer's dementia. So overall, they found that liraglutide significantly increased memory retention and the total number of neurons in the mice that received the injections. It also showed that liraglutide delayed or partially halted the progressive decline in memory, which is observed in early stage sporadic Alzheimer's disease. There was also another clinical trial called the ELAD trial, which evaluated the effects of liraglutide on Alzheimer's dementia as well. It used 206 participants with mild Alzheimer's dementia randomized to receive either liraglutide or placebo as a daily injection for a year. In the study, those who received liraglutide had nearly 50% less volume loss in several areas of the brain, including the frontal, temporal, parietal, and total gray matter measured by MRI images. These areas are responsible for a variety of critical functions that are often affected by Alzheimer's dementia, including memory, language, and decision-making. Researchers also conducted cognitive testing in these patients before treatment and at 24 weeks and at 52 weeks of treatment. And it showed that the patients who received liraglutide had an 18% slower decline in cognitive function in a year compared to those who got the placebo. So what does this mean? In my opinion, this means that we are one step closer to finding a treatment for preventing or even slowing down the progression of dementia. But let me emphasize this. It's a treatment, not a cure. I believe that GLP-1 agonists can slow down the progression of Alzheimer's dementia, 
but only future clinical trials will tell us by how much. If you want to keep up to date on all of these new findings, especially when it relates to dementia and Alzheimer's dementia, keep an eye on the EVOKE and EVOKE Plus trials, which are currently testing the effects of semaglutide on the progression of dementia, and they should be wrapping up soon. The main body of the study is set to be completed in 2025, followed by a 52-week follow-up period to monitor participants. So I'm hopeful that the results should be officially published by 2026. Like I've said before, GLP-1 agonists truly are the future of medicine, and this is just another reason why I will always stay on this medication, even at least at a low dose. All right, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment below, and I'll try and get back to you guys as soon as possible. See ya.